Stanley Theater presents Tyrone Power, Billy Burke, and Daddy Lynn. Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Curtain Call for Genesius, starring Tyrone Power and featuring Betty Lynn and Francis X. Bushman. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Billy Burke. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become as important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now, to our drama, Curtain Call for Genesius. Starring Tyrone Power as Genesius and featuring Betty Lynn as Flavia and Francis X. Bushman as Emperor Diocletian. Stan Waxman and May Clark. <laughs> We have all heard of great actors who literally lived their parts. This is the story of an actor who died his, and in doing so, won a triumph greater than all the applause of his contemporary theater. A celebrated name, the greatest classic comedian in the whole Roman Empire. But, as every showman knows, the public is unpredictable, and this was nowhere truer than in Rome. Genesius' fame might have died with him or before him, but for his last performance and first fiasco. It is the year 303 A.D. From Nicomedia, residence of the Emperor Diocletian, an edict goes forth to the entire Roman world. Whereas with great clemency we have up to now relaxed certain previously enacted measures against the contemptible sect of Christians, but whereas these Christians have shown their ingratitude by flouting the holy gods of Rome, be it enacted that any and all who followed the teaching of the so-called Christ shall be brought to the prefecture, and upon refusing the sacrifice to the gods, shall suffer the penalty of death. Add to the measure. This is to be enforced simultaneously in every city and province. Do you hear? Yes, divine Diocles. I'm sick of this Christian business. This flouting of the official gods must cease. Yes, sire. Ah, now to pleasanter matters. We have decided to celebrate the Visedalia in Rome itself. All shall be prepared, sir. Mm, yes, I expect rich amusement. I presume they'll butcher these Christians in that monstrosity of architecture, the Colosseum. Undoubtedly a good many, sire. They are a stubborn lot. Ah, I don't want to witness it. I delegate the condemnations to you. For my part, the theater... The sublime comedies of Aristophanes, or even Polydorus, were enacted by sophisticated players, not like the bumpkins in the provinces, eh, Plotinus? <laughs> I am sure we shall devise entertainment worthy of our divine emperors. Mm -hmm. That will be a novelty. Well, prepare for our journey to Rome at once, noble emperor. Oh, mob of magpies. Places, I pray you. We must go through Flavia's scene once more. Very well, Genesius. Oh, I'm hungry. We'll be worse off than hungry if Flavia doesn't mind her speech. Her speech? What's wrong with her speech? It's her entrance that worries me. I don't mean in the play, but in life. Daring to criticize, and at her age, our divine emperor. Are you by any chance a Christian, Flavia? I wouldn't deny it if I were. <laughs> Bravo, a girl of spirit. And yet you defend them. But what harm can they do? And everybody knows the emperor isn't really divine. Well, do you allow sedition in your company, Lord Genesius? Uh, dear Marcella, 
I've often told you you take all things too seriously. Too seriously? Do I shock you? Perhaps you think now I am a Christian. Oh, anybody but you. (laughs) Oh, I couldn't believe that. But imagine, I might be. Genesius, worshipper of a donkey's head, rubbing elbows with demons and witches in subterranean caverns to eat the flesh of swine, or worse, and plot the death of Caesar. I don't believe they do that at all. (laughs) It's little you know of them, child. I pray to our gods that Diocletian exterminates them all. On the other hand, I'm not for killing Flavia because she sees nothing godlike in our emperor. That would require the faith of a Christian. (laughs) And now then, to place the scene wherein I repulse Flavia. She enters through the arch. I am there. Hmm. He has been repulsing Flavia for quite a while. Naturally, she's virtuous. Therefore, he has no interest. (laughs) Success, Genesius. And here's someone to see you. I am Gaius Petinus, some praetor by the grace of the Divine Emperor. My congratulations, Lord Genesius. Worthy praetor, this is a great honor. Pray come in my dressing room. A real and live imperial official coming backstage. I'm sure it portends something dreadful. Flavia's words have reached the Emperor's ears. Ah, you make Flavia too important. She makes herself important. Have you not noticed how silent she's been? How secretive? Quiet, here she is. Uh, change so soon, Flavia? <laughs> Why the haste? We're all going to supper. Genesius, too. Uh, wait for us? Not tonight. I, I don't care for supper. <laughs> Some admirer is waiting, I'll be bound. Perhaps. Good night, all. Going to a meeting of the Christians, I'll be bound. <laughs> So what his divinity desires is something different, something, uh, how shall I say it, um, piquant, something he has never seen before. Hmm. Well, I, I of course, am an actor, not a playwright. (laughs) By Bacchus, but you are modest. The first actor ever to declare he cannot write a play better than any playwright. For which I may become immortal. (laughs) But I'll try. In fact, I've been thinking there is much talk here of the new edict concerning the Christians. Uh Huh? And what do the people say? Well, some criticize it, but most applaud it. And you? I. I loathe them. Whether they be a danger to the state, I know not. But I am an artist. And this doctrine of an omnipresent God, all pure, why, man, it will spell the doom of art. Conceive, if you can, of our theater debauched by the Ten Commandments of the Hebrews with some added perfections of their own. A tragedy, mind you about a man who turns the other cheek when he is struck and forgives the assassin of his son. A tragedy wherein the audience is invited to weep for a damsel who chooses misfortune to the jewels and silks of her admirer. Ha! A fit subject for farce, yes. And that is my idea. Hmm. You would make a comedy about the Christians? Why not? The way to deal with these fanatics is by ridicule. Uh Hmm. Hmm. The emperor might enjoy it. He seeks novelty. Yes, but my trouble is I know so little of their custom. I can help you there. I have a cage full of them to examine tomorrow at the Praetorium. Be my guest. We'll examine them together. Can you do that? For my imperial master's pleasure. If you'll give us a comedy. You'll find descriptions of their meetings, their baptism, so-called, and other right. Oh, fine, fine. It is settled, then. Now I must go. Oh, dine with us, worthy Praetor. I, I promise I can provide you some rare diversion. Uh, uh, my thanks, but no. I have cases to prepare. Oh, never become a state official, Genesius. You see the lions now in their cages, Christians. Beware lest you meet them at closer range. Well enough. Cart the beasts back to the Colosseum. It is not our gentle emperor's wish that you become the food of those lions, or if more fortunate, a prey to the headsmen. Diocletian would wish to spare you. Now, I think you should be reasonable. The edict specifies that you shall prove devotion by sacrificing to the gods. Nothing here, mark you, that commands you to give up your Christ. Let him be a god. We have many gods in Rome and many cults. 
The wings of our Imperial Eagle are broad enough to cover them all. Worthy Praetor, we've been through this so many times before. You know our answer. You, sir, I take it, are a priest? I am the deacon, Abnar. A deacon? A half-priest, then. Ah, Genesius, I'm glad you came. <laughs> Pardon my late arrival, but we dined until dawn. Oh, I envy you. Well, now, this part is called the admonition. Afterwards, you may study our record. No, oh, I must, and diligently, if I hope to write a play. No, pray, go on with the uh, admonition. With your permission. Very well, Christians. Thus says the edict. You flouted the gods of Rome. Flout them then no longer. Again, all suspected of following the teaching of Christ shall be what? Fed to the lions? No. But brought here and given a fair chance to sacrifice also to the gods. Now, where is the difficulty? Bow to our official religion, and you may have your own in private. Guards, take them back to the waiting cells. I'll examine them individually. Get along. Make haste. Clear the chamber. Bring forth the first, Publius Antonius Axilla. An illustrious name. Oh, it is surprising. Some of the people who are becoming infected by this nonsense. My dear Antonius... And how do I find you here? By the grace of God and your emperor's edict. Ah, Lord Genesius, you've heard of the family of Ixilla? Oh, yes, with much respect. Allow me. Lord Antonius, forgive me. I am not an official of this court, but I am an older man than you. I am no patrician, merely a performer. But I have long esteemed your noble house. As your senior in years, I implore you... Do not bring disgrace upon it by associating yourselves with these fanatics. You don't belong here. Genesius speaks more eloquently than I. Antonius, my dear fellow, we are your friends. You are indeed. And I pray we shall meet in heaven. But why can't we be friends on earth? It's so simple. Just a grain of incense dropped in this flame before the image of goddess Rome. But this is our commandment. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Then your god is a menace to the state. Oh, Antonius, your father was my friend. More, my benefactor. Just one small grain of incense. <coughs> Speak to him, Genesius. Antonius, I see your point of view. There is but one deity, and all others are meaningless. They don't exist. Well, then, say you obey the law, just as a matter of form, and render homage to a meaning. But if meaningless, then your action is meaningless. And it follows you commit no sin. Bravo, great Genesius. You are a genius. But it does not follow. It would be a denial of the sovereignty of God. You dare to claim your God as sovereign? Of the whole universe, yes. I have been lenient with you for your family's sake. Now I have no choice. Publius Antonius Axilla, in the name of the people of Rome, it is my duty to condemn you to death. With all my heart, I thank you, noble Platinus. And we shall be friends. For I pray we shall meet an eternal friendship in paradise. Take him out! Their fortitude one cannot but admire. How is it, Genesius? What do you think is their secret? Well, speaking as a dramatist, I would say they are in love. Pain becomes joy to those who are in love. Yes, even though their beloved be unworthy. Now, I say they are mad. But one is bound to admire their devotion. Next, the damsel Flavia Marciana. What? Platinus? Who did you say? A young girl apprehended last night when my men raided their meeting. Flavia. Hail, Genesis. You know her? But she's in my company. Why, well, you saw her last night upon my very stage. Come closer. Yes. Now that you mention it, had you knowledge of this, Genesis? None whatever. Though by all the gods I wouldn't have told if I'd had. You speak boldly. I am no wretched spy, even for season. Well, well, let us be calm. Young woman, you have friends whom the emperor admires. Genesis here. Now, I'm sure you're just an impressionable girl. Perhaps you have some lover among these Christians. He has placed his seal upon my brow that I admit no other lover but him. What is she talking about? Something in their ritual that I, cursed of fate, came here to learn. Praetor, let me speak in her defense. Here was no Christian. I swear it until the issuance of your edict. This she disagreed with, thinking it harsh, whereas she is gentle. With her temperament, she was carried off her feet. 
We actors are thus inclined. Oh, poor Flavia. This comes of my neglect. The chief of a company should be father, elder brother, yes, even husband, if you'll have me. I've been blind, a fool. Worthy Plautinus, put her in my charge. I'll marry her, or adopt her, or, or send her to my aged aunt. Well, you've heard this generous offer, my girl? Vinicius, had you said those words as little as a month past, I'd have flown to your arms and never let you out of mine. But how could I tell you I adored you? Oh, Flavia, my dearest, my sweetest, there is still time. Thank the gods. Yes, even your god. Plotinus here is our friend. He requires so little. Just a matter of form. Genesius, it is too late. For last night I was baptized with the saving waters of the redemption. And I have made my special vow. That henceforth I am all his. As his consecrated bride. Flavia. Yet, for all your kindness, I bless and, and thank you. Flav Courage, Genesius. You're overwrought, girl, but I shall be patient. In consideration of your youth and of Genesius' patronage, I remand you to the Martian prison for 30 days. I hope you will have a change of heart, for Genesius may visit you frequently. On your part, Genesius, I trust your influence on this misguided girl. It is for you now to set her an example. Flavia. I am glad to see you, Genesius. Here, I brought you some fruit and decent bread. And look, a cooked pheasant. You were always kind, Genesius. Oh, what is kind? I know what it is to be in love. And I also. You are in love with an idea, an ideal. No, Genesius, with a person. A person? And you say he is divine. Flavia, tell me, I, I committed myself to find out all I could about your sect. The play, that isn't important now, but I must know. What do you believe? Tell me, Flavia. I must know. I am nervous. Yes, and I. Uh, Genesius, how patient you have become with the emperor himself in the audience. Did you visit Flavia again this afternoon? I have missed no day since she was imprisoned. What courage. What an example. Come, hurry. First scene. Gracchus, you know the prologue? Letter perfect. If I don't get tongue-tied in the presence of the emperor, uh, hold the curtains apart. Here I go, we who are about to die. <laughs> Most noble lords and ladies. Oh, yes, you too, divine emperor. Uh, what is your name? Uh, Octavius? Aurelius? Uh, no, Diocletian, that's it. Welcome. <laughs> no one relishes a joke better than I. We must have the graciousness to laugh at ourselves, eh, Plotina? So say the philosophers. <laughs> In this mask you are about to see, we pray you take no offense. Briefly, I appear as our divine emperor. Briefly, too, I appear in the last act as a Christian priest. <laughs> because for one night only, our dear Genesius shall be a Christian. Even a dying Christian. <laughs> and therefore, in need of a priest. Or of something. <laughs> so now, with your majesty's permission, to our play. The first two acts of triumph. Genesius, you are superb. The emperor is pleased. That is our purpose, to provide Diocletian with diversion. Thanks, my friends. And now to change for the finale. This Genesius is a marvel. Such shadings of character. A confused man, a fool, if you will. 
yet reflecting the vacillation of our humanity. <laughs> I don't think you'll approve of his solution. Oh, yes, I'm sure he turns Christian in the end. So many frustrated fools are finding their heart's contentment in that dream. A pity. But I think this powerful ridicule may open their eyes to their folly. That, sire, is Trinicius' intention. <laughs> Two minutes, Canisius. Two minutes to the last stop. I'll be there. Boy, hold that mirror quite still. I must take pains with my appearance for the last act. And I must play my part well. A catechumen, they call me. Ready for baptism, yet not as yet baptized. And mark you, this performance I dedicate to Flavia. For has not Plautinus said, Use your influence with this girl. It is for you, Genesius, to set her an example. Will you come? So be it then. For I know of no better example nor lasting lesson than may be set by means of a play. Listen! Listen! Hear them applaud! For one night only on this earth's stage shall Genesius be a Christian. And you must be baptized. No time must be lost. You would baptize me, even on my couch of death? Oh, I cannot for that. I'm glad to be rid of you. So long as we save your soul. <laughs> oh, happily, there is a Christian priest at hand. What? So near? Oh, they're always underfoot these days. <laughs> Come in, most holy Papnusius. Aha! Uh -huh. Dying, I see. <laughs> Let us save his soul at once. Some water, good woman. You baptized then with water? Good. I feared you wasted wine. Oh, always with water, my son. Take a deep breath. I baptize thee a Christian. <laughs> Open in the name of Caesar. Save us, Lord. We are discovered. Aha. The imperial procurator. So, you recognize me? Well, the priest Papnusius. Long have I sought you, priest. I am not afraid to die. It is pleasanter than being a Christian. <laughs> Here you stand, all of you, before the image of Jupiter. Sacrifice! I will not. Nor I. But you, young man, are but recently baptized. All because your mother poisoned you, so you thought you were dying. <laughs> now have sense. You need not die. Sacrifice to the gods in the name of our Lord, the Emperor. There is no other Lord or God save him whom I adore and serve. <laughs> Those are the words in the script. Though I suffer a thousand deaths... No torment shall remove him from my heart. With all my soul, I regret my former ways. And until now, that I have hated his thrice holy name. What is this? There is no comedy. I, I cannot imagine. Fetch him. Bring him here. Woe is me that I have served false gods who are devils. You mad, Genesius. Keep your seats. Keep your seats in the name of the emperor. Here is Genesius, sire. Your comedy seems to have gone awry, Lord Genesius. Back to the stage and prove that you are jesting. But I was not jesting, sire. What? The play is finished. That's how it ends. You see, it is a comedy up to a point. But then, you wanted novelty. So in my last scene, I do not jest. You dare defy my orders? Sire, I can end it in no other way. For I do profess Christ. And my comedy is done. Then I shall rewrite your ending. Plotinus, tell them to keep their seats. The play is not yet over. Now then, instead of a wretched actor, I shall play emperor myself. Lord Genesius, I command you, forswear Christ. Apologize to me and to the people of Rome, and I may let you off with banishment. Noble Diocletian, this is still my play, and I must write my own lines. P. 
people of Rome, I beseech you, embrace the true God who is your Father. For there is but one Lord, the upholder of all nations, and his Son is the Prince of Peace. I cannot watch this. Genesius ah! has indeed provided us with a novelty. What a pity. More than 1,600 years have passed since Genesius died for his belief. Actor, martyr, and beloved patron of a noble profession. Travelers have their Christopher. Artillerymen, their St. Barbara. Musicians for patroness, the noble maiden Cecilia. We have just considered a comedian, a star of the stage, a bygone star, yet one who, by his last performance, made himself everlastingly glorious. Genesius. <laughs> Billy Burke again. We of the theatre are extremely proud of our Genesius and of other figures like him, not all of whom indeed suffered martyrdom for their beliefs, as he did, but who have through the ages lived up to the splendid traditions of noble aspirations, of generosity, and in many more cases than the public may be aware of, of tender and devoted family life. Genesius was a hero and our inspiration. In our own more humble and much smaller way, we are privileged to follow in his footsteps. Genesius, the careless man, vain perhaps at first, yet who rose grandly to the occasion and played his part to the end. Genesius, the man of prayer, without which he would never have had the courage or the grace to defy imperial custom and unjust law to his death. And so, family theater tonight, reiterates its message that prayer is the mighty solvent, the true communication medium between God and man, and that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. <laughs> From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Curtain Call for Genesius, starring Tyrone Power and featuring Francis X. Bushman and Betty Lynn. Billy Burke was your hostess. Others in the cast were Mae Clark, Stan Waxman, John Stevenson, Lee Millar, and Michael Hayes. The script was written by Fred Nippo, Jr., with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present Jane Wyatt, Frank Fay, and Gordon Oliver in Pas de Deux. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Oh.